Hello, lifelong learners. It is I, Hewlett, David Hewlett here with another audio awesome for you. This is where I read you my weekly email of awesome awesomeness so you don't have to. But what you do have to do is go to techbandits.org and sign yourself up for the email so you get all the pretty pictures, all the cool details, the links, all that kind of stuff. And you can follow along, class. It'll be wonderful. Here we go. This week... Oh, this week. This week it is a crabby, sun-punching email of awesome awesomeness for you. That will all make sense later, I'm sure. It seems in the meantime that my beloved film and television industry has sprung back to life midwinter. We've got the strikes over with. We're back to work. Everyone wants to shoot their freaking show or film or whatever in the second week of January, and the auditions are coming fast and furious. Don't these people realize I've got important creative work to do here with this email of awesome awesomeness? Well, apparently not. I'm actually quite enjoying it, I've got to say. this. nice to be auditioning again. There's been some fun parts, and it's like a little scene study class every time I get one of these things. We just we get to record them at home, and i got to say, I'm begrudgingly enjoying myself. Anyways, I'll keep you posted as to what happens with those. In the meantime, I have been drowning myself in the wonders of shipwrecks thanks to last week's email of awesome awesomeness and that whole adventure there it's just that there's so many damn exciting options available to the modern day seafaring adventurer now there is an estimated what did they say an estimated three million shipwrecks out there three million ships sunk out there somewhere and only one percent of them have been explored so there is a lot of opportunity in this and it's also a field that's a little wider than i'd expected i've been checking out the national oceanic atmospheric administration the noaa and it's just got of course you guessed it a treasure trove of information these incredible blog posts about their expeditions their discoveries the research they're doing and the one that sort of struck me was this whole explanation about why you know the scientific reasons behind why it's so important to study our sunken past, all these all these wrecks. And many of these I'd never even considered. So archaeology. So archaeology is the science of learning about past human behavior by examining what's been left behind by those people from the past. But unlike graves and temples, which are kind of orchestrated by the time and the people involved in them, shipwrecks are different. Shipwrecks are a kind of accidental time capsule. And it's capturing a very specific moment, terrific, terrifying, horrific, terrible time in history. But it is something, it's a snapshot of that moment in time. And the advantage of shipwrecks over archaeological sites on boring old dry land is that these ships, they often sink into the, to, to the bottom of the ocean. They're usually unreachable, and thus they are untouched until more modern tools and equipment shows up. And so they're, in many cases, pristine, like absolutely perfect historical snapshots of what's going on. And, and it, I just, I find that very, very cool. They're also saying that these ships haven't just changed the course of, of human history. Scientists can use them to discover how wrecks have, or how we and our wrecks have influenced the ecology in marine environments. So they can be transfer organisms from one body of water to another body of water while they were still above the surface. And then when they sank, they, they then became colonized with marine life. And we can, we can have a look at those too. There's also things like using them to study changing currents and weather patterns, not to mention how our technology and our mistakes, our accidents, our shipwrecks have impacted the environment. So just some really, really cool stuff there. It's a much wider range of expertise than I had I had previously thought, and, and it's just a great site, that um, NOAA site to check out. So I highly recommend that. Now, while we're underwater, our crusty crab of a reporter, Lance Gimpy G. Carr, has shared some super videos with me, which I have to sh pass along here. And these are about the crazy strong, wonderfully weird mantis shrimps. Now, I've I think I may have even talked about these before, but this is just a little, shall we say, a deeper dive on this, thanks to to, to Lance. And it's because of these club-like claws. I don't even know if they are claws, but this basically it's like a bony club that they have that is so incredibly powerful. So these ancient crabby clowns, because they're wonderfully colored things with these crazy cool eyes, they pack a serious punch in that they can hit the water so quickly that it creates a low-pressure area 
that then forms a bubble which collapses in a burst of high energy light and sound. So this can get as hot as the sun and, and then it implodes causing a secondary wallop of a hit as well. So you don't want to get hit by these things. They have got a shed load of interweb interest. Should I say shell load? I mean, they don't really have shells. So a shed load of interweb interest, thanks to the brilliant internet pioneer Z Frank and his hilarious True Facts show. They did a True Facts about the mantis shrimp. Cannot recommend it enough. It's it's wonderful as as most of his his nature videos are. If you wanted to send a little deeper into these ridiculously OP, that's overpowered for you less than less than cool kids, undersea brawlers, then you got to check out Physics Girl because she has done this fabulous video with an expert in ultra-fast biological systems, which to me just screams mantis, mantis shrimp expert to me. But I suppose it could, it could also include, I know that the, the jellyfish stings are an incredibly fast biological system, well, possibly the fastest. Anyways, so this is Professor uh, Patek, PhD. She's the principal researcher at the Duke University Patek Lab. And you got to check it out because these these two scientists have so much fun chatting about this stuff and they, they do a nice a nice in-depth look at, at how these these crazy undersea brawlers do their do their stuff. And if, like myself, you want to peer into the murky mysteries of science itself, there is a there is a video on sonoluminescence, which is sound-induced luminescence. So basically doing the same thing that that little mantis shrimp can do, but they're doing it with sound instead. This is from Thought Emporium, who does wonderful geeky stuff and looks into how this stuff happens and how you can get temperatures like this kind of this kind of heat underwater. Uh, so you should definitely check out Th uh, Thought Emporium's Punching Water So Hard Light Comes Out, So No Luminescence. It's pure nerdy joy, my friends. Have, have fun with that. And speaking of nerdy joy, I've been playing with Python and data analysis. I've told you about this. I've been taking this, this wonderful Google Analytics course, really enjoying it. So it was an immense pleasure to be, to hear that Baz and his friends were actually excited about Spotify's yearly listening data wrap up that they do. Uh, I don't tell Baz, that, but but it, there is a you know there's a chance he could be coming a bit of a data fan here or a data fan. I don't know how you say it. I mean, he's already a veritable encyclopedia of of soccer facts, football facts, stats and players and the deals they're making, all the lineups and and the standings and stuff. I mean, I do a lot of very sort of proud sort of nodding and and knowing smiles and stuff. But you know, it's like it's Arsenal. Who I you know it's sports. Yeah. Anyways, uh, but now that interest is spreading to music tracks and the stuff they're listening to. So, I mean, some of you may find it, I, I, I definitely touched on this myself, where some of you may find it a little bit creepy and intrusive to consider the sheer amount of incredibly granular data that these programs are collecting about us as we happily rock on or rock out or whatever kid, cool kids do these days. I mean, the amount of information they can get from you know where you're looking to what you're tapping on is extraordinary. But the data privacy angle doesn't seem to worry the kids at all. In fact, Baz was so excited that he actually sat me down and made me go through this Spotify wrapped 2023 thing and uh, was very happy to see that I was categorized as a vampire. I, I'm assuming it's just very cool. And it got me thinking about these cool and creative ways that data can be presented. I mean, it's, it's, it's so much more than those boring old bar charts and, and line graphs. You can burn those babies because this data visualization stuff is making numbers make lots of sense to millions of people and it's looking damn good in the process. So I'm very, very excited to see how intuitive and inspiring these data visualizations have become. And to such an extent that it's showing up in my day-to-day -day life with, with the kids excited about their Spotify stats coming out and, and just that they've done a beautiful job with the Spotify, so a beautiful job of making it it's exciting and cool and almost gamifying it in a way. And it's, uh, it's, 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 really, it's really fun to see. So it got me thinking about other data visualization stuff out there. And I'm going to have to start with you know, the granddaddy of all of it for me, which is this video. It's a TED Talk video by David McCandles. It is 11 years old, but it is a must, must watch about the beauty of data visualization. This guy, God, he loves his stuff. And it just makes you two love it as well. It just... I. It, it, the way he explains it, the way he talks about different ways of approaching data and having fun telling jokes with data, it's just extraordinary. And you have to see this video before you go any further. Everybody, go get the newsletter and, and check out this video because it's wonderful. And in the meantime, I've, I've got a, a bunch of a few favorite 
visualizations that you can feast your eyes and brains on. And uh, I, I would love to hear what what you found. I mean, what are there ways that data has been presented to you that you find interesting? Please let me know. I love this stuff. There's a bunch that I've got listed here from stolen paintings, which is a wonderful visualization of, of when paintings were stolen and and what paintings were stolen. The, the alarming part being that most of them seem to be stolen recently rather than in the past, which is not what I would have thought. There's a crazy cool mapping of the inner workings of a fly's brain. It's basically the, a fly through of a fly's brain. And, and that is a video worth watching. A real mind, a mind mender, melder there. Uh, active satellites in orbit. We've talked about this in the past as well, but there's a wonderful data visualization that um, has been done about satellites in space. Check it out. There's also uh, a look at our planet in the form of CO2 levels from fossil fuels. This is a beautiful image. Like it's, it's this extraordinary collection of strings of data that they've tied together, almost woven them together into a, almost an aurora borealis of, of information. And it's just a perfect example to me of making some horrible data beautiful. And I, I would say, have a look at that. There's also one that puts plastics in perspectives, which is just, wow. It's, it's like a Barbie explosion of color, just seeing, you know, what oceans are affected in what way by the amount of plastics we've got in there. It's just, it's, it's very, very cool stuff. So check it out. Like I say, techbandits.org, get the email. You can sign up and you can, you can get links to all this stuff right there. And now I'm going to wrap it up for you. Things to do, places to go. I invite you to join Lance and I on our intermittent Damn Dirty Abe's chats that we're having. We're trying to do them Mondays, but the auditions will be messing with that. But but we will certainly be doing more of those. Looking forward to doing that. And also, I'm looking forward to getting back to some tech banditry live stuff. So I'm hoping over the holidays to maybe drag some of the kids back in and uh, we'll do some some tech bandits chats as well. I'm curious to know what they have to say about you know the game awards and and uh, some of the gaming stuff that's going on and what else they, they're finding interesting. Got to check in with Vibepup too. I've talked to him for ages. Anyways, so I will say until we geek again, be brave, be kind, be brilliant. Cheerio and huzzah! Bye. Thank you. <laughs>